but last week was the first in our series, and uh, you know we put that up on uh, Sunday. And sometimes when we're here on Sunday, I think it can be hard to get a picture of who we are as a people. And uh, we send this email out during the week, but we're bodies that are a little bit sometimes disconnected. And it's hard to know who are we. Are we more than the 15, 20 bodies that show up here on a Sunday morning? And I can say with the 30 of us that were here last week, there were about 90 people total in our community that participated and listened and watched and were challenged by that growth, many of them participating in home churches. So it isn't just us here in this space uh, that are gathering. There are other people, obviously, you know some of your friends aren't here this week sitting beside you, but we rotate, and some of us are here and some of us are out there. Um, so this will be a, a permanent fixture whenever I um, am teaching um, myself locally, just so that we can make sure that we're all on the same page. Speaking of pages, it's important not to um, forget yours. So anyway, I'd just like to pray again for God to uh, come and be with us today. Because I am distracted, and uh, I pray that that spirit will help us to focus together on him. Heavenly Father, we're here because you brought us here. You created us, you created us in your image, to steward your creation, to walk in relationship with you, with each other. Lord, you sent your son to show us a way, a way to walk, a way to be in the world. I pray that you will help us to see what way you're calling us to walk. You'll soften our hearts to your spirit so that we will be able to follow where you're calling us to go. Lord, I, I pray that you will give us simple hearts that desire you and desire to share your love with the world. I pray this in your son Jesus' name. Amen. So we're going to talk today about rest. Um, I think it would be fair to say that as a society, you know, things are getting busier and busier and busier all the time. I feel like my marriage to Whitney, we've always been waiting for that period of time where we can rest, where we can take a break, or where things will get a little bit easier. So, I, I mean, are you guys, who's, who's been married here, like maybe they think they've been married here longer than me? Don, Leslie, are you guys still waiting for it to get quiet in your marriage? Yeah. So, I mean, that's a fallacy, waiting for that quiet, perfect time. Well, I want to tell you about a perfect vacation that I'd planned uh, before I was married. Perfect things are a lot easier to attain before you have kids in a family, just in case you were wondering. But my parents have a uh, timeshare uh, in uh, Daytona Beach. We've been going since I was like five years old. Uh, this week I'm in mourning because the, the pool and the hot tub just disappeared into the ocean with uh, Tropical Storm Nicole. So I'm having, like, I'm having a moment of grief that this place that I see as a perfect place of rest doesn't exist anymore. It's gone from the world. Anyway, my parents have a timeshare. And when I was in university, we had, a, like, like most people who go to college or university, you develop like a, a very tight-knit group of friends. And about our third or fourth year, I wanted to gift our friends with a reading week vacation. So uh, we traded my parents' timeshare. We got uh, a place on a beach in North Carolina, and we went down. And I planned uh, how we were going to get there. I planned that uh, we were going to stay. So I was paying for the trip. We were staying there. I figured out how we were going to get our 10 friends down to stay in this condo. And all they had to do was figure out you know, our entertainment and our food uh, when we got there. And so I, I was like, this is great. You know, my family, when we go on vacation, we take one trip to the grocery store. Uh, we stick to the place. We go in the hot tub. We walk on the beach. We don't do anything. What I've come to realize is that this is not always the way that people find rest and relaxation. You see, we got all my friends down there. We figured out the sleeping uh, arrangements. You got a whole bunch of young Christian people. We've got all the girlfriends in one of the places, and all the all of our all of us guys are off in this other part of the condo. And uh, day two, like day day one, we were recovering. We were so exhausted. We drove 19 hours straight to get there. Day one, nobody wanted to do anything. 
But day two, it was 9.30 in the morning, and I was already down by the hot tub sitting in it when my friends started to appear, one after the other. There were about four or five of them eventually, and they asked, like, well, what, what are we going to do? Like, what are we going to do? I was like, I, I don't know what you're going to do. I'm resting. But it turned out that that was not how things were going to go. I needed to get involved and plan some events. So we planned uh, to go play mini putt the next day. So we loaded up our two cars. You should note, we loaded up two cars of people and we had a plan. We were going to play mini putt. And so we got separated when we were driving to mini putt, obviously. In my car, we drove to the one that we said we were going to go to. Um, now granted, uh, other people may have taken longer or they might have gotten lost or might have thought we were going to a different place. Often when you're on vacation, you can find three or four spots. There were four places where you could have played mini golf. Well, my party, we got to a spot and we waited. We waited 20 minutes. The other car didn't show up. And so I was like, well, what do we do? Do we play? Do we go? We drove to the other three mini putt locations to find the other car. Well, as luck would have it, that was what they decided to do as well. And so we crossed paths. And it, when we reached the last possible mini putt location that they could have gone to, I looked at the guys and I said, we came here to play mini putt and we've been driving for two hours. So we're going to play mini putt. I've never made a more incorrect decision in my life. By the time we got back to the condo where the ladies were fuming because we didn't show up. Uh, you know, we had to make new plans. And the perfect vacation suddenly turned into a horror show where I was trying to just plan fun little events for people to go on. We did have a lot of fun. We played uh, games and uh, whatnot. But, you know, depending on what your vacation looks like, you know, it may not rejuvenate you. Plans may shift, things beyond your control, and you may not be able to be refilled. I didn't get refilled on that vacation. It's not the way that I get recharged. I enjoy quiet, alone time to just sit and recharge. And in connecting with you, other friends, our culture is tired as well. I'm tired. I was talking to somebody in our home church this week. I was reflecting on the challenges that I faced in my previous job before I had come here and how exhausting that had been and how I hadn't even really recognized that. And so we were talking about how we set up rhythms of rest in our day, in our week, so that we don't have to seek a perfect vacation to recharge us. God doesn't ask us to live a life of hard work to reach a great reward at the end. No, he calls us to rest and to relationship with him, that kingdom life, right now, today. So we've got three passages on rest uh, that I'd like to read uh, this morning. The first comes from Matthew 11, 28 to 30. And this is from Jesus, the Son of God. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. My yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Come to me, and you will get rest. The second passage comes from Genesis 2, 1 to 3. Thus the heavens and the earth were completed in all their vast array. By the seventh day, God had finished the work he'd been doing. So on the seventh day, he rested from all his work. Then God blessed the seventh day and made it holy, because on it he rested from all the work of creating that he had done. See, the work wasn't finished in six days. He made the seventh day holy. The last work was rest, was stopping and not working. And we're invited into that rest as well. The last passage comes from Psalms. Unless the Lord builds a house, the work of the builders is wasted. Unless the Lord protects a city, 
Guarding it with sentries will do no good. It is useless for you to work so hard from early morning until late at night, anxiously working for food to eat, for God gives rest to his loved ones. Psalm 127, 1 and 2. Why is it so hard to rest? Do you guys have any ideas? Do you guys have difficulty resting? I'm, I can edit this part out. I'm kind of curious. Does anybody else have trouble resting besides me? No, Don, you're e you, you have it easy. You can rest? All right. Well, God created everything and then created and engaged in rest. Do you think God needed to rest after created everything? After he created everything? No. But he does, because there's a good part of creation. And he invites us into that as well. But sin, sin is the element that makes it challenging for us to get true rest. You see, I know what I'm capable of because I know my heart. I know my first inclination is to fear. Um, fear that, you know, there won't be enough. I mean, I in today's um, inflation, I just have to drive past the gas station to wonder what will happen with those numbers. Will the prices go up? Will I have enough to make ends meet if things keep continuing the way that they do? I know many people in our communities are feeling that way as they look at their grocery bills. What do I have to do? to stay afloat. Sin causes us to fear that there isn't enough. We hoard and we move away from each other independently to try to make sure that we will have enough for ourselves. We seek a control of things. I sought to control the vacation. I knew what I wanted to do so I could get the recuperation I needed, but I couldn't control it and I didn't get that rest. Maybe you're not just tired from working, your job, running a household, raising kids. Maybe you have an idea about who you are. Maybe you think, I'm not good enough to enter into that rest. Maybe I'm not ready to go before God. Maybe I have to do X, Y, Z to get right first. My heart's not ready. Does that sound right? Have you ever said that before? What do you think you need to do to come before God? Jesus says, come to me, all who are burdened and heavy laden. You can come as you are right now. What do you think you need to bring? You know, we have, um, I almost want to grab one, these old uh, church offering plates that we use for offering. What do you think that you need to bring to God so that you can say, sit in the rest that he's offering? Instead, can you trust God when he says that it's finished? Have you ever thought about it? Have you ever thought that something that you have done is impossible for God to work through? No. The work is done so that you can come and sit at the feet of the king. Are you having trouble trusting? There were, um, the Israelites too had trouble trusting. You know, God tries again and again and again and again to lead the people into rest. He told uh, Abram when he called him, I'm going to bring you to this land, the land of milk and honey, the land which is also referred to as the land of rest. God tried with the people in the garden to show them what a life with healthy rhythms of rest and life uh, in the kingdom could look like. But sin caused us to turn away and go a different way from God. And again, he tries with God's people. He shows them a land. And in Hebrews 4, we read the account of the people first going into the land. They don't go all at once. First, they send spies. Twelve tribes, they send twelve spies. And this is what happens. We read in Hebrews 4, uh, chapter 8. Now, if Joshua had succeeded in giving them this rest, God would not have spoken about another day of rest still to come. So there's a special rest still waiting for the people of God. For all who have entered into God's rest have rested from their labors, just as God did after creating the world. So let us do our best to enter that rest 
But if we disobey God as the people of Israel did, we will fall. So this seems like, wow, if you don't enter the rest, you're going to be punished. Well, what happened when these 12 spies wet, went into the land of Israel was they noticed things in the land. They noticed that there were people there that were huge, in way better shape than they were. They noticed that the food was great. They noticed that pe the people had an abundance. But they didn't trust God. God said, I'm going to give you this land. And the people said, those people are going to squash us like a bug. They didn't trust that God had done the work and was going to do the work and was calling them into a land where he was going to show them again how to live with God, how to live that kingdom life that God made us to live in from the beginning. But instead, they were afraid, and they chose not to go, not to trust God. And that punishment meant that they had to wander in the wilderness, trusting God, learning again how to follow him in new ways before they could go in. They weren't ready to rest, and so God gave them the work that they were asking for, trying to help them prepare in the way they thought they needed to prepare to go into the land. You see, today, we sometimes get into this debate. Is it works or is it faith? You know, we believe in faith that Jesus died for us, that he's done all the work so that we can come back before God. We know that we don't have to do anything to receive that. It's a gift. But knowing something in your head is a lot different than living it out in your life. Do you really and truly believe that Jesus has saved you? If you do, you should be able to start to enter into the rhythms of rest that God has called you to. From creation, we've been invited to rest. So from creation, we've been invited to rest. Arguably, we've never accepted it fully. I'm still struggling with rest. I can, I can admit it. Like, I, I could work myself like 100 hours a week, you know, in, in building the church. You guys could come and join and volunteer and work even more than your own work jobs at home in building the church and trying to do the things that we think God is calling us to do. But sometimes... Sometimes we need to just stop. Stop like that 30 seconds after worship today and rest. Rest and connect with God. We need to start turning and connecting instead of working. We need to listen. God says, I will never leave you or forsake you. Deuteronomy 3.12. And he says, where two or three are gathered, there I am. We don't need to work. We didn't need to do anything in particular for God to enter into this space. We're here to meet about God. He's here. Do you believe that his spirit is here in this place with us right now? God rested. God invites us to rest. God did the work so that we can rest. Are you investing in the things that God is inviting you to? Or are you doing some good things that you think are going to bring you before God or that are going to bring you God's favor? You don't need to do those to approach Jesus. Don't let any to-do list keep you from the feet of the king. You deserve rest. You belong at the feet of the king. He's calling us all into a kingdom life. He's calling you today not to get it together, not to a to-do list, but to come and see, to find your place of rest in the kingdom. So this week, I'm going to invite you to join me in finding one thing not to add. I don't want you to go into your calendar and say, I'm going to rest for 30 minutes. That's not what I want you to do. I want you to just stop and be with Jesus, not to add, but to subtract. Look at your calendar. Look at your events and invite the Spirit to speak. What's one thing for my week coming up that I can put down so that instead of being busy, instead of rushing forward, I can rest with you. Go home and choose 
one thing that you can stop to be with Jesus. The way of Jesus begins at his feet. Remember, the first call of the disciples was to come and see. If you're actively doing, you won't be able to see. Will you stop? Will you slow down? Will you put down your to-do list? Can you get rid of one distraction so you can start to listen? We're going to uh, participate in um, a Christian meditation of rest. Uh, I call this a safe space uh, meditation. It isn't centered overly on any particular prayer or passage of scripture. Um, And the reason I want to do this with you today here and with those of you that are watching with us online is because I want to help create a space where you can find rest if you are at work and it's busy, or if your kids are screaming and you're behind a door and you're seeking peace. I want to build a place of rest with God and you in your mind. And, um, you know, I've worked with people that ask questions about Christian meditation and, you know, what's the difference between this and other forms of meditation. And I'll say this, we are inviting God's spirit into this space with us. And um, where God's spirit is, the truth will be. And so let's trust God today uh, as we invite him into this meditation uh, with us. So I'm going to guide us. Uh, I'm going to do a couple things just to focus our breathing and center us in. Uh, Then I'm going to invite you to close your eyes if that's helpful. We're going to imagine some safe spaces. um, And hopefully my voice isn't a distraction, but will help you uh, in that process. And uh, hopefully this will be a beginning um, for you. So I'm going to sit. And uh, I'm going to invite you first to get comfortable. I know it's a silly thing. You've been sitting there this whole time. What does comfort mean? Just somewhere where you think you might be able to sit for five minutes without moving. And remember, God is a God of grace, so if you get distracted, just give it to him. Remember that offering plate? God asks us to put things down today. If you think of things and they get in the way while you're in meditation, just imagine you're putting it in an offering plate for God and invite him to hold it for you. Let's pray. Holy Spirit, as we meditate, we call for you to come between us. You're creative. You created the whole universe. We can only begin to grasp that creativity, God. As we begin to imagine safe spaces, I pray that you will help each one to be creative. And we pray, God, that you will make your spirit's presence known in a very real way today for each person that joins us in seeking you. Begin by taking a deep breath in and breathing out. You can try to get into a rhythm if you can. Do whatever is comfortable, but I try to breathe in for four seconds. Hold it for four and release. Breathe in deep. And breathe out slow. And I invite you to begin to ask God to help you remember a time when you felt absolutely safe, maybe purely loved. It might be with God or it might be another memory, just with family. First, let that feeling just wash over you. Now, I invite you to open the eyes in your memory to look around the room where you were in that space. Maybe a space that's real or imagined. But look around. What is in this safe space? Is it a room? Is there furniture? Is it nature? Spend a moment 
looking around this safe space and noticing what is there. Breathe in deep. I invite you to look around again and this time seek the spirit, seek Jesus, God, however you imagine God in this space. Is God present here? Jesus says, come to me, all who are weary and heavy burdened, and I will give you rest. Jesus called children to him and said, do not keep them from coming to me. I invite you to sit down in your memory at the feet of Jesus, the Spirit, and just be. Let's be with God for a minute, and then I'm going to wrap up in prayer. Take a deep breath in and breathe out. Holy Spirit, as we prepare to leave this space, I pray that you will always remind us of it, of this space where we can always go to sit with you. Lord, I pray as we leave, when we breathe, that you will remind us of this space with each breath in, with each breath out. Help us to trust you. Help us to trust you when you say the work is finished. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for all that you've created. Thank you for not leaving us when we turn away from you, but for chasing after us and getting in front of us again and again and again. We are so grateful, Lord, for all that you've done. I pray that you would continue to challenge us to grow, to enter this rest, to come and be with you, and to share that invitation with others. Amen. I hope you guys have a great week. Um, we got rid of some chairs in the back, so there's a little more room to mingle. And uh, I would encourage you to just maybe share, you know, A, what does resting look like for you? Um, and Maybe if it's already on your mind, what is that one thing or what is one thing you think you might be able to put down this week to be able to just rest and spend some time with God? Share that with each other um, and then bring that out to others. Have a good week, guys.